Hello, hello, everyone. Amanda Grace here with you today with Chester. Chester wanted to come into the office and say hello to everyone. He was pawing at the door. So Chester is one of our cats at the sanctuary. He is fighting diabetes, and that's actually why we took him in. He's about 11 years old, going on 12 right now. Oh, look at you. Just look at you. You're just being a little mush right now in the middle of all of this. So, yep, here's Chester. One, now I have to get Chester out of the room because the birds are out. And so we cannot just let Chester wander. So I'm going to put Chester out for a minute now that you all have seen him. And I'm going to let him go on his way now. Okay, honey. Here you go. Okay. Chester got his love. He's all happy. He's all happy right now. Okay. So welcome to everybody watching in the United States and around the world. And to our Ark of Grace team. Thank you for helping us do what we do for the Lord. I'm just getting the Toledo on here. I'm getting situated. We're going to open up in prayer in a moment. Uh, if There's Grace. You see Grace right next to the thankful? She's perched right there. So Grace is going to be, uh, she's going to be around and out and about during this, uh, during this teaching. So Gruchet is out also. You guys have asked for the birds. The birds are out. It was kind of funny because Jonathan Kahn asked for the birds. Rabbi Jonathan Kahn. When he came on to interview, the birds are out and we're looking very forward to this amazing teaching. We're going to open up in prayer. I have some announcements to go over and then we're going to get into this. I think you're going to get a lot out of this. So, Father God, in the precious name of your son, Jesus Christ, we come before you. We praise you, Father, that you are almighty God. You are high and lifted up far above every power, principality and might. We give you all the glory, honor and praise due your precious holy name. Lord, we humble ourselves before you this day, asking that the pull of the flesh becomes less in our lives, so you, your will, and your power become more in our lives. We acknowledge you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to the earth in the form of a man, and that he was the word, became flesh, and dwelt among us. He was the sacrifice for our sins, the Passover lamb. He willingly died at Calvary. That blood dripped onto the mercy seat and purchased us and redeemed us that day and made an open show and spectacle of the enemy before all of creation. Lord, we praise you. We rose again in three days, ascended back into heaven and took his rightful victorious place at the right hand of the father where he rules and reigns forevermore. And we honor that before you this day. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, we invite your presence, the presence of Ruach Elohim, the spirit of the living God, and the presence of the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKadosh, to fill this place, Lord, that the weight of your glory would fall, that the power of your presence would move, that you would go before us today, Lord, lead and guide us in all wisdom, counsel, might, power, and the reverential fear of the Lord. By the power of the blood of Jesus Christ, by the spirit of the one true living God, may only the truth and power of Almighty God with authority now come forth in Jesus' name. Lord, take all the glory for yourself, Father. You are the potter. We are merely the clay. You are the author and finisher of our faith, Father. Lord, we just, in the name of Jesus Christ, take authority over every plot, skin, contract, assignment, weaponry, blueprint, attack, and strategy that the enemy, satanic agents, dark forces, unclean spirits, and the like would attempt. We command in the name of Jesus Christ it all be broken, canceled, aborted, destroyed, dismantled, disabled, thwarted, disrupted, blocked, their communication lines disrupted so they cannot carry out these attacks and thwarted, bound up and cast back to the dry places, pits, and areas, Lord, you have designated to be bound there in the name of Jesus Christ and not return or have anything sent to this place. Thank you, Lord, for this day, for this time father god we praise you lord we thank you father in jesus name amen and amen okay amen amen so let me go over a few announcements i'm going to move the camera down just a little bit you can still see grace you know she's right this actually has moved over now so she's right there there she is there she is so let me go over some announcements as all of you are jumping on the chat so first and foremost I am going to be in Wyndham, New York, October 5th. Please come join us in Wyndham, New York. Uh, it's open to men and women, actually. So they've opened it up to men and women. It started out as a women's luncheon, but now it's open to men and women. You can join us. Chris and I will be there at Hope Restoration Christian Fellowship Church in Wyndham, New York. So please come out and join us for that time. Praise the Lord. Okay. Also, Israel trip. Coming up in May, the Pentecost tour. Please come and join me and Chris for this amazing trip. Dr. Ronnie Wexler will be there. I believe Doobie is going to be joining us. There's Dr. Ronnie Wexler, who is Kim Clement's tour guide. He is going to be joining us on this trip as well. This is going to be an amazing, 
amazing trip. I promise you it will change your view biblically. It's going to give you a deeper, incredible view of the Bible. And you're going to walk in the places that you read about. And it's just, it, it's an amazing time. So please sign up and join us for that. Uh, and I think that is all, except we have one more. It's the gala. We have our gala coming up. You are invited. You can you can sign up for the gala. It uh, all proceeds benefit the Ark of Grace Sanctuary, so it's for the sanctuary. The gala. It is going to be at Christos in Poughkeepsie, New York. So please, if you can, come out and join us for this gala. We're going to have some of the animals there from Ark of Grace Sanctuary. You're going to meet some of them in person. So please, November fourth, uh, starting at five p.m. So please come out and join us. And you can sign up. We have the website up there. So you can sign up for that. It's also under the events page of arcofgrace.org. Okay. So we've covered everything we need to cover. And now we're going to get into the meat. Now this is where it begins. So there's a lot to go over here. We are going to put the notes up on the blog. Uh, we're working on the blog. So we, we're, we're, we're changing a few things and we are putting notes up. So... Uh, we will let you know when the notes are up on the blog, but it shouldn't be long. It should be, you know, within a few days after uh, we get done here. So to set the tone for this and 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 how this all came about and, and the Lord started showing me these things uh, a couple of weeks ago on a broadcast. I wish I could find the footage for it because maybe we'll be able to find the footage for it. But a couple of weeks ago on a broadcast while I was speaking in back of me, unprovoked. On the lowest part of the shelf back here, okay? So, like, I'll show you where. On the lowest part of the shelf there, okay, where the little piggy sign is there, okay? A book fell unprovoked. It literally, nothing shook. The animals weren't in here. Like, nothing prompted it, and the book fell. So, I was kind of prompted to go over about... I don't know, a couple of days later and, and look at what this book was that actually just fell over on its own. And it was this by Oswald Chambers. Okay. So devotions for a deeper life who wrote my utmost for his highest, uh, is what fell. And so what happened is I started doing the devotions in here and I was playing catch up on a couple of devotions from the weekend because I read my Bible every day. And then I do sometimes the devotions also. And so I'm reading it, right? And I've got the I've got the book open here and I've got it down here and I'm looking at it. And Cyrus walks over to my left, which he never does. Okay. He never really comes over to the left side. He puts his nose in the book. I'm not even kidding you. And he flips it to November 28th. Puts his nose inside the devotional book and flips it to number 28. Why? Is this significant that this happened? Because the Lord will use the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. The wise sometimes just don't want to realize it or acknowledge it. And so November 28th, 28 is the number of years Jehu reigned, okay? After he was anointed, destroyed the altars of Baal, destroyed the house of Ahab and Jezebel, and was anointed to do such a thing. It was actually 2 Kings chapter 10, uh, verse 36, now the time which Jehu reigned over Israel in Samaria was 28 years. 28 is the amount of years it looks like the, the enemy has tried to jump ahead. Now, this is in uh, Robin Bullock's book, The Pool and the Portal. So it looks like that 28 years from Jehu's reign, um, the enemy tried to jump this ahead or even more uh, when it came to 2008, and we'll get into that. 28 years is the amount of time between Clinton's last term that they took in 1996, the year in which he was impeached, and the 2024 election. 28. Very significant. Now, when this happened, and I started praying, and Barbara started praying, November 28th is is significant, okay? Around the time of November 28th. So it could be before, it could be a little bit after, but around that time, and I don't like to give dates often, but around that time, from then on, people have to rise up, be in prayer, be in praise, fast, 
there's going to be significant warfare. So look for around that time of November 28th for some serious events to occur. And that is also for us as the people of God to know we that there is going to be significant warfare. We need to rise up. We need to be in prayer. We need to be in praise. We need to fast. What is so amazing and prophetic about this happening is that it was Cyrus who turned the page. Think about that. Cyrus turned the page. Cyrus, King Cyrus. Trump has been compared in the past to a type of Cyrus. And Cyrus was utilized by God to protect his people. Cyrus turned the page. Uh, and then Barbara had been praying and November 23rd, around that time, she is saying that, you know, like you see on an advent calendar and it's a countdown. Well, look around that time in a way also, uh, a countdown to what's going, going to begin to transpire and what you see around maybe the 28th into Christmas. Okay. So between November 28th and Christmas time, we need to be in prayer and fast and just uh, be in the word and be listening for the Lord. Now, this takes me to a dream that happened on April 9th, 2022 with Martha's Vineyard and the Christmas chair. So this is like a word. This was a dream that was a word. So I'm gonna take you back to the dream and refresh you about the dream. There was a room with much wood in it and it was some kind of party. Uh, it also can represent political parties who have gotten together to co-mingle in this room, in this house, uh, at Martha's Vineyard, uh, to, 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 to plan something basically. To my right was a very tall man, about six foot three inches. Uh, and I asked um, about him and found out that he was a pastor, but he was quiet, okay? So he's off to the side and he's not saying anything. Toward the back of the room, the crowd was clearing for a moment and I saw Carolyn Bissett Kennedy sitting back there in the back of the room, shorter haircut, looked older, okay? Like maybe she would, uh, you know, look now or maybe look 10 years, uh, look about 10 years ago. In front of the room to my left was a special Christmas chair. That's what it was called with red velvet and gold writing. I was told it was a Christmas chair and everyone in the room was buzzing about a birth, but wanted to make this special announcement from this Christmas chair. So you have one that went down at Martha's Vineyard. All right. What happened with the Kennedys? And you have the other who's trying to rise up from there, which is Obama. Now, remember, all of this is back from 2022. And then we find out that one of the uh, chefs that uh, has to do with the Obamas in their household um, was found apparently dead in a, a body of water that was that was nearby to their house. Uh, so this is what's being reported. So you have the one that went down to Martha's Vineyard and you have the other that's trying to rise up from there that has to do with Obama. And then you have the birth of a child, but it's representative of something. OK, so it may not be an actual child. It's a representative of something. They are going to present uh, that they're holding back part of their plan that involves all of those over the past 28 years and before the Clintons, the Bushes, the Obamas. Um, so around Christmas time and the time of Hanukkah. OK, now this year. Uh, Hanukkah begins on December 7th. OK, this is when Hanukkah begins. So this is was basically the dream. OK, that was had on, on April 9th, 2022. Carolyn, now we'll go into for a minute that Carolyn Bissett in that dream was a conduit. Okay. So this was not, this was not about anybody coming back in the flesh. It was that in the dream, she was a conduit. Um, and, and the Lord had put her in that dream at that time to show what was going to transpire involving Martha's Vineyard between the Clintons, Bushes, Obamas, those in the Republican and the Democratic Party. Uh, she was also there as a connector to JFK and JFK Jr. And so you have JFK and JFK Jr., right? And the way you you they got attacked. And then you have you have Donald Trump and his sons, okay? 
Uh, and so it, it's just an interesting comparison. Uh, there were a lot of secrets that are going to be revealed out of the New England coast. That was something else that came from that dream in 2022. A lot of secrets were going to be revealed on the New England coast. And also they are going to break all of the rules. So they were going to attempt to break all of the rules with Obama, especially. And it was now 24 years ago, I think, that their plane went down, that JFK Jr.'s plane went down at Martha's Vineyard. So what is about to rise up from there because of this dream and this Christmas chair and this gathering, something or someone is about to rise up from there. And so this uh, reminds me, which I think we're going to get into later on, also of the dream I had uh, back in January of 2021, which we will get into in a moment because I want to continue on this Martha's Vineyard for a moment. Because Martha's Vineyard, in a way, is a sort of Naboth's Vineyard also. I talked about Naboth's Vineyard with Hawaii, but Martha's Vineyard is also a type of Naboth's Vineyard. Why? Because there's always scandals there on the land. So in a way, Martha's Vineyard is also a type of a of Naboth's Vineyard, which was connected to Ahab and Jezebel spilling innocent blood to try to get what they want. So the red chair, who, who they're trying to put in this chair, was not going to be as, as expected. And Carolyn Bissett in the dream represented Martha's Vineyard. And this is why she was there in the dream as well as a marker for the area. Okay. It looked very New England in the house too. Like the way the house looked was very like New England sort of style. Now the man that was the pastor, remember the six foot three gentleman that was the pastor? He is waiting and watching. So he's not saying anything yet, but he's waiting and watching. Uh, now, also to continue to connect all of this. April, 2023, I was in Tulsa, Oklahoma for an event. And around midnight, the Lord woke me up there and said to me, and you've heard me say this before, Trump was the 45th president. He is running to be the 47th president. Four plus five is nine. Four plus seven equals 11. Nine, 11. This was going to be prophetic and profound in more ways than one. This was also a warning for 9-11 of this year. And I'm going to show you why. Because on 9-11, Biden strikes an enormous deal with Iran. Now, 22 years after 9-11, this deal is struck. Interestingly enough, here, I'm going to show you it right here. Biden strikes deal with Iran, releases $6 billion in frozen funds. Okay, I'm going to read the article here. The Biden administration has struck a deal with Iran to swap prisoners and release $6 billion in frozen Iranian funds. Per the deal, Iran will release five American citizens detained in Iran and the U.S. released five Iranian citizens being held in the U.S. Okay, so, and then it goes on to talk about the $6 billion uh, that the United States classifies Iran as a state sponsor of terrorism. And it goes on from there. So when the Lord had said that to me also, it was a warning of what was actually going to happen on 9-11, because this deal happening on 9-11 puts Israel in an interesting position, okay? And we'll probably talk about that on another broadcast, but I'm going to say it puts them in a very interesting position, and watch what Israel does in this hour. They have an open door now. They have a window, which they are going to have to take the opportunity. So I would just watch for that. And they did it on the 22nd year of 9-11. This deal was struck and the news broke of it, okay? So there's a reason they're doing this on 9-11. There, there's a message being sent here, okay? And this all ties back to what they're trying to do, to that dream in Martha's Vineyard, to the Christmas chair, to who they really want in the chair. This, this kind of begins to all, in a way, tie back to it now. Interestingly enough, the 22nd and final letter of the Hebrew alphabet is Tav. Now it states in the Talmud, which is like the, which is like a Jewish, we'll call it historical book, teaching book, uh, you know, um, law, that sort of thing, that the letter Tav represents the word MS, meaning 
truth. The reason MS is represented by its last letter Tav, okay, is that the essence of truth is determined at the end of the journey or passage, not at the beginning. Interesting. Often when we begin something, the truth of the matter does not seem attractive. Only upon seeing the outcome do we appreciate that the path of MS was the only way to travel. So the end of a journey or passage. Hmm. On the 22nd year, he, uh, Biden does this with Iran. And the 22nd of the Hebrew alphabet is Tav, which means truth that happens at the end of a journey or passage. Now, this gets even more interesting because according to Bible scholars, okay, far and wide, many of them agree that King Saul reigned 22 years in Israel before being removed from the kingship. And this year is the 22nd year of 9-11. And on that day, this enormous deal is struck with Iran, which means we are at the time where some Saul's are about to be dealt with. Some Saul's are about to be dealt with, including in the lines of former presidents some and current. Some Saul's have to be dealt with now. Now, leading into this, okay, because not only did Saul suffer, his son suffered, okay, in the word, in the scriptures. Not only did Saul suffer at the end, but so did his sons. On Rosh Hashanah, 2023, all right, it's called, I think it's called Yom Teruah is another name I believe they use for it. The Feast of Trumpets, Hunter Biden is indicted. So on the Feast of Trumpets, on the heels of his father striking this enormous Iran deal on 9-11, 22nd year of 9-11, the steel is struck. Right after that, on Rosh Hashanah, Hunter Biden is indicted. Federal prosecutors have indicted Hunter Biden, the son of President Joe Biden, on gun charges, court documents show. He was indicted Thursday in federal court in Delaware on three counts tied to possession of a gun while using narcotics. Now, this is just the beginning, but you're seeing the effect of it here. The father gets himself entangled now in a deal he shouldn't be in. And uh, right after that, the son is indicted. Okay, I'm going to read to you the words from the Lord having to do with all of this right now before we go on, because I think it's important for us to go back to it. November 26, 2019. They are not the ringmasters, says the Lord. They are indeed the fools and the clowns in a very convoluted charade that has been put on display to open the eyes wide of the people and yanking up by the root for all to see the true motivation of these false excavations that the enemy's agents have taken part in a witch hunt where they shall now become the hunted for dare attempting to hunt my children down and take them down, says the Lord of hosts. How dare they? The hunter shall now become the hunted and the hunted are moving on and soaring to glory and shall be above and not beneath. So those that have been hunted by the hunters are going to move on and soar and the hunters now will become the hunted. I am preparing a table before you in the presence of your enemies and those who have persecuted you, says the Lord. Truly, you shall eat the meal of victory for the time has come for my children to break through and break away from the cycles, tricks and backdoor shackles. The enemy has attempted to use to keep them from continuing in my plan for where we are at now and what is going to take place is such a threat to his kingdom in the propaganda cycles. He's talking about the enemy. Uh, propaganda he cycles out that he has attempted to find any way in through anyone around you to oppress, depress, drain, and siphon from you. Not only the blessings of the Lord, but that's capitalized the spiritual gifts that cause you to thrive. However, I'm getting the enemy by the hall of his leg and putting him out of joint where they cannot latch on or chain my children any long uh, longer for by force of my word that's capitalized these shackles are breaking those holes are weakening and those attempting to hinder and oppose what i know is best for my children will by force be moved out of the way and put in a position where they cannot as easily meddle or attempt to override my agenda with a falsified one that the enemy and his merry band of familiar spirits have convinced those around you that certain things are of a concern when they are not even on my radar for your life right now says the lord so that was November 26, 2019. 
Then we have September 14th, 2020. Because remember, when the Lord repeats himself, it's getting closer, right? Normally, when the Lord repeats himself, I know it is the event is drawing close. September 14th, 2020. The hunt is on, says the Lord. The hunt is on. The hunter shall switch in the blink of an eye and become the hunted. For I, the Lord God, am reversing the current. I am reversing the current. For many are attempting to create a current that runs opposing Almighty God, that opposes the people of God. A raging river of a current. Rage being the key word, my children. There is an attempted advance of a raging river. And raging rivers are bumpy. They are furious. However, I, the Lord, starting Rosh Hashanah, shall bring forth strategic events that shall begin to reverse the current, the rapids. And then we go to April 7th, 2023. The persecuting spirit has been sent forth with force to intimidate the people through the events unfolding in your nation. Those who grin at such, what a sad and pathetic group, says the Lord. They shall find themselves flat on their backs. Those grins will not last for long as they think they have hunted down prey. The hunter shall become the hunted. This will echo in this season once again. It has gone forth. However, the hunters have set themselves up to become prey, for they shall be hunted down by their own agendas, by their own accusations, by their own weapons of destruction, that they shall lose control of these beasts, and they shall become the hunted for what they have done. So that was the last one. That was uh, April 7th, 2023. Now, Leading into this, July 12th, 2022, I had a vision. And it was this creature, head of a dog, body of a person, and wings. And it was perched atop a dome, which represented St. Peter's Basilica and the capital, Washington, D.C. And from that vision, I had written this down. A hunting down, okay? And then it talked about someone connected to the kingdom of darkness um, or someone connected to the capital in D.C. Um, is was going to suffer certain events. These have, and, and it would be D.C. and the Vatican. Yeah, you would see some events happening in tandem. OK, how do you get. Now, this is interesting. How do you get Joe Biden to not want to continue being the front man? How do you get him grief stricken in bed and get him out of the way? Well, he has lost one son already, Bo. Hunter is his only living son. The hunter shall become the hunted. So I had written that after having that vision. And then we go back to a dream, okay? I had an early 2021 where I've spoken about this before that I had saw, I saw Joe Biden very sick in bed. He looked very unwell. And Obama was standing at his bedside at the head of the bed waiting, excited, all dressed up in a suit and waiting. And Biden's family was nowhere to be found. Um, he appeared, Biden appeared grief stricken, like he could not go on living. There were three different pairs of shoes on the floor representing three former leaders. And Obama was at his bedside dressed in a nice suit and ready and excited at the, at the condition of the ailing Biden. There was a crowd of Middle Eastern people gathered around waiting as well, uh, potentially representing different countries in cahoots and waiting for him to slip away. A piece of apricot candy known as Turkish Delight was on the bed. And I fought through that crowd, reached and snatched the candy away from them and ate it so they could not have it. That candy represented a celebration and victory as, in, as prevalent in Muslim and Middle Eastern culture. And that was snatched away from them. I, in the dream, represented not only we, the people, fighting through and rising up. I also represented the prophets rising up and being utilized by God to expose and destroy their plans. So this dream happens January 2021. Okay. Now, this article just came out. Biden 80 is worried he might die before his son Hunter's legal issues are resolved and think they will get worse. So this was reported that now President Biden is fearing that he might pass away uh, before any of these legal issues are resolved. And I'm putting this up here just to show you the connection through all of these dreams. And then the dream in 2021 
with him in bed. And now this article is coming out. I'm showing this to you too, because it's showing a spiritual, um, it's showing what's happening in the spirit and a progression um, and a race towards what we see happening and a race towards trying to figure out how to move people out of the way and play musical chairs right now, how to do a bait and switch. I'm also putting this in here to show you. Uh, 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 basically, as a so it's a sign of what agendas are crumbling and beginning to falter in this time. So in the middle of all of this, there was a prophecy that came to pass about Disney that was given September, uh, that was given August 1st, 2023. And this is what it says. For those who want to promote the perversion of DNA of genetics, that snake of perversion, those who want to put it on a pole and tout it in this hour shall indeed suffer disgrace. The agendas of the pluses, the pluses, shall suffer disgrace complete disgrace that their voice is lost. Their money power shall suffer the largest blow and their leadership shall fail and crumble. The pluses are falling, says the Lord. The hauntings Disney has attempted to summon shall turn on them yet again, says the Lord. Another strike to their holdings and networks and executives alike shall indeed cause a faction to completely fall. This you shall see. This you shall see in this season, says the Lord. And September 17th, 2023, news broke. And I'm showing you this to show you that these all of these agendas are beginning to seriously suffer. Disney sees massive fall off for Disney Plus, the agenda of the pluses. Disney sees massive fall off for Disney Plus, Hulu subscribers after price hike and woke policies. And so the article goes on to talk about, this is what it says, Disney is, is expected to fall tens of millions short of its 2024 goal for Disney Plus and Hulu subscribers in the aftermath of big, big price increases for their streaming services and growing public anger over their woke policies. Uh, and so basically the pluses, the agenda of the pluses, you have a plus on the end of Disney. Interestingly enough, I believe Disney started putting the plus on the end of its word and soon after LBGTQ plus happened. So the agenda of the pluses in this hour are going to indeed suffer disgrace. So we're seeing Disney, the other is going to come. So I wanted to put that in there to show you that this is going on in this time. You are seeing all of these agendas now beginning to falter because of the foundation it has been built upon. And now the enemy is frantic. And now you have all of these incredible things happening. What happened on 9-11 with, you know, after 22 years on 9-11, this Iran deal is made. And then on Rosh Hashanah, you have the indictment of Hunter Biden. You have all of these things happening at once that we have to pay attention to. Okay. So I'm also going to show you this because we have to go back to 2008 to talk about how we can make sure this doesn't happen again, because we have an issue here. There is a pattern here that we have to address and we as the church have to be aware of and we have to deal with. So I'm gonna show you uh, a picture of the altar of Pergamum. That's the altar of Pergamum, the throne of Satan, where Hitler had a, a replica made to give his famous speech. There it is, okay? Okay, so. Obama at Mile High Stadium in Denver has a platform built that represents the altar of Pergamum. Look at that. Same platform was built for Hitler to give his famous speech. And now Obama, when he's running, has something built that eerily resembles the altar of Pergamum with all of those American flags on it. Now I'm going to read to you from Revelation chapter 2, verses 12 through 15. And to the angel of the church in Pergamum write, the one who has the sharp two-edged sword says this, I know where you dwell, where Satan's throne is, and you hold fast my name and did not deny my faith even in the days of Antipas, my witness, my faithful one who was killed among you, where Satan dwells. But I have a few things against you because you have there some who hold the teaching of Balaam, who keep teaching Balak to put a stumbling block before the sons of Israel, to eat things sacrificed to idols and to commit acts of immorality. So you also have some who in the same way hold the teaching of the Nicolaitans. Okay. 
putting up all of those American flags on that altar, and make no mistake, that was an altar, was a way of putting America in 2008 at the altar of Zeus, the throne of Satan, to sacrifice it. All of those flags there on a replica of what looks like the altar of Pergamum was a way to put America there to be sacrificed. Okay? If we were to jump ahead 28 years from 2008, we would be in 2036, which is really when some of the things that happened were supposed to happen. So now the enemy has tried to jump ahead and the Lord has to put the schedule back to where it should be. Because in the enemy's mind, he lost 28 years when Jehu destroyed the temple of Baal. That, that was a time he lost a big block of time. He destroyed the temple of Baal. Jehu destroyed the altars. He destroyed the pillars, the house of Ahab and Jezebel, the prophets of Baal, and Jehu reigned 28 years after that. So all of that, the rest of, of Ahab and Jezebel's rule was cut short and the enemy lost that. So basically what happened in 2008 put us on a course to where we are now. This precipice and crucial moment to get back this nation. Now, interestingly enough, and this was confirmed to me when I read Robin's book, the devil does not have the power to move time unless he can get the body of Christ to do it for him. If he can get enough of the body of Christ into agreement with him, he can try and accelerate time um, and place leadership at the helm who serves him. He can try to accelerate that leader into a position they're not supposed to be at. He can try to accelerate a nation. He can try to accelerate a group into a position that, that's not supposed to be yet. Example, back in Germany, right before Hitler's rise to power, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, a prophet of the Lord in the 1930s, saw the enormous mistake the German church and the nation was about to make. Most of the German church ignored what he said and drifted along as it had always done. The church spiritually was asleep at the wheel and could not see what the enemy had been preparing to take over Germany, attempting to completely destroy the Jewish people and try to take over the world. It takes courage to stand and face history and shout, stop. That takes courage to do that. And it was 1932 when Bonhoeffer on Reformation Sunday warned of the evil that was about to come upon them. Unless the German church saw where they stood and repented, God would judge it because judgment begins in the house of God. In 1933, there was a document called the Barman Declaration, the Confessing Church, it was known as. Those who opposed the ideology of the Nazi party signed it. So in 1935, there was about 18,000 pastors in Germany. 3,000 stood with the Confessing Church against the Nazi ideology. 3,000 pastors stood with the Nazi party opposing the confessing church. Sound familiar? And 12,000 pastors were not willing to take a stand one way or the other and remained lukewarm. They didn't want to get involved. They didn't want to get involved in, in the political. They didn't want to speak out on it. They didn't want to act like they, 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 they didn't want to see what was going on. They wanted to look the other way. 12,000. If another three or 6,000 pastors were willing to stand with the confessing church to come into agreement, to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might and put on the whole armor of God to stand against the wilds and schemings of the devil, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, Hitler would have never come to power. Because the church is the conscience of the state. We are the conscience. And when the conscience gets seared, goes down reprobate avenue, begins to rationalize and to accept what is evil. The church has done the nation a great disservice and even more important has rebelled against almighty God. And similar happened in 2008. We need to know these things for now. So we are equipped now in order to do what the Lord wants us to do in this hour. So similar happens in 2008. So what was going on in 2008? Well, 2008, was a Shemitah year. What's a Shemitah year? Every seven years is a Shemitah year on the Hebrew calendar, the Jewish calendar. Every, it takes seven Shemitahs to make a Jubilee. Many serious events tend to occur 
on Shemitah years or during a Jubilee. So 2008 was a Shemitah year. 2008 was the year of the financial banking crisis in this nation. It was the year that the banking crisis happened. It was an election year in the United States of America. 2008 was also the 50 year mark of Fidel Castro's rule as dictator over Cuba. And what happened because it was the Jubilee, the year of release, he stepped down from power in 2008. 50 years he stepped down from power and Cuba was released from Castro. But in the year a dictator steps down from power that was reported worldwide, that spirit was roaming the earth looking for other hosts and now found a host in a man named Obama. In a Shemitah year during a banking and financial crisis, when Castro steps down, Obama wins election over John McCain. It was a Saul moment for sure, especially to the part of the church. And, I, and I'm serious about this. This was a Saul moment for sure to part of the church, to the African-American community, and, and the Saul moment was, you think this is what you want. You are so desperate for, for, for a king like you. So they, they were desperate for the first black president. You're desperate for, for, for a black king. Well, here you go, but it's not going to be as great as you think. So this is a Saul moment for the church because part of the church, and this just doesn't have to do with the African-American community. This has to do with the whole, the, the church in general, was hoodwinked and made the same mistake that the church made in the 1930s with the Nazi party. They stood with it. They, they were deceived because they were lukewarm, because they were not equipped, because they were not being led of the spirit. And the same thing happens now in 2008. In that moment, part of the church was bought blinded and completely rejected God and his plans. Part of the church stood with the very ideologies that were unclean and wicked to God. They did the same thing that part of the church did in Germany. Part of the church stood strongly against Obama and this liberal ideology. So part of the church stood against it. Part of the church stood with him and supported this ideology. And then a large part of the church turned the other way not wanting to get involved at all, saying we should completely stay out of this, stay out of politics, stay, look the other way and continue on our superficial teachings that we're doing. So it kind of split up the same way that it did in Germany. We saw happen in 2008. This was the dilemma of Bonhoeffer and the confessing church all over again. Even the prophets, including Kim Clement, were saying that McCain was supposed to win that McCain was supposed to win. But the enemy, just as in Germany, got enough in the body of Christ to agree with a charismatic puppet and enough to completely disengage from the authority given through Christ Jesus and look the other way. He got the people, the enemy, to sacrifice the authority they have through Christ Jesus, give it up, look the other way, and come into agreement with what he was doing. This gave him what he needed to try to accelerate time and jump ahead of schedule because the enemy is always looking for a way to jump ahead of the schedule of God, to get in the middle of it, to mess it up, to mess with time. First Samuel chapter eight, verses four through 21. Then all the elders of Israel gathered together and came to Samuel at Ramah. And they said to him, behold, you have grown old and your sons do not walk in your ways. Now appoint a king for us to judge us like all the nations. But the thing was displeasing in the sight of Samuel when they said, give us a king to judge us. And Samuel prayed to the Lord. The Lord said to Samuel, listen to the voice of the people in regard to all that they say to you for they have not rejected you but they have rejected me from being king over them 
like all the deeds which they have done since the day that I brought them up from Egypt, even to this day, and that they have forsaken me and served other gods. So they are doing to you also. Now then, listen to their voice. However, you shall solemnly warn them and tell them of the procedure of the king who will reign over them. Verse 10. So Samuel spoke all the words of the Lord to the people who had asked him, asked of him a king. He said, this will be the procedure of the king who will reign over you. He will take your sons and place them for himself in his chariots and among his horsemen, and they will run before his chariots. He will appoint for himself commanders of thousands and of fifties and some to do his plowing and to reap his harvest and to make his weapons of war and equipment for his chariots. He will also take your daughters for perfumers and cooks and bakers. He will take the best of your fields and your vineyards and your olive groves and give them to servants. He will take a tenth of your seed and of your vineyards and give to his officers and to his servants. He will also take your male servants and your female servants and your best young men and your donkeys and use them for his work. He will take a tenth of your flocks and you yourselves will become his servants. Then you will cry out in that day because of your king whom you have chosen for yourselves, but the Lord will not answer you in that day. Nevertheless, the people refused to listen to the voice of Samuel and they said, no, but there shall be a king over us. That's part of what the church did and the nation did, the United States of America in 2008, that we also may be like all the nations, that our king may judge us and go out before us and fight our battles. Now, after Samuel had heard all the words of the people, he repeated them in the Lord's hearing. The Lord said to Samuel, listen to their voice and appoint them a king. So Samuel said to the men of Israel, go every man to his city. And that after that, they found Saul. Now, Something else interesting happened during the second term of Obama that we have to talk about, which I did not even know until I read up on this. But in the 16th century, there was a comet called Negra, and it passed by the sun and earth. The, after that, the Black Death then hit the earth, which was the bubonic plague. Okay. 666 years later would be November 28th. There's the date again. November 28th. The date that Cyrus and his nose turned to in my devotional. Okay. So 666 years later would be November 28th, 2013. Thanksgiving and Hanukkah fell on that day. 28 days later, there's the number 28 again, was Christmas. However, November 28th, 2013, so now you have that, okay? So you have that with the comet that passed, you have the bubonic plague that hits, you have 666 years later, which is November 28th, 2013. November 28th, 2013, the comet ISON, ISON, passed by the sun and earth. After that comet passed, 666 years later, another type of black death arose in the earth, and their name was ISIS. The worst terrorist group the modern world had ever seen, and Robin Bullock references these particular comets. And what happened? Barack Obama conveniently played them down, ISIS, and allowed this death to grow and shed much innocent blood. He fostered it and allowed the spilling of that innocent blood because he was one of them. ISIS was indeed in the White House at that point. ISIS was indeed in the White House. Now, ISIS was a major goddess in the ancient Egyptian religion, okay? whose worship spread throughout the Greco-Roman world. Um, uh, basically, she, in in this account, she resurrects her slain brother and husband, uh, the, divine, the divine king Osiris, and produces and protects his heir, Horus. So I Isis gives birth to Horus, okay? She was believed to help the dead enter the afterlife as she had helped Osiris, um, it was considered the divine mother of Pharaoh. Who killed all the Jewish babies? Who tried to destroy the brute Jews? Pharaoh. What spirit was behind that? Isis. 
Um, they talk about that she was involved in healing spells. And then basically that um, the worship of her basically grew. So uh, in the first millennium BCE, Osiris and I Isis became the most widely worshipped Egyptian deities. Um, and Isis absorbed traits from many other false goddesses uh, and rulers in Egypt. Uh, so basically, that spirit is the same spirit that went after the, the Jews and, and threw the babies in the Nile. And it's the same spirit that was influencing in the, in the, in the first and second term of Obama. Now, she gives birth to Horus, okay, which was considered at that time one of the most important false deities. He was commonly depicted as a falcon-headed god with a double crown, okay? So I'm going to show you a picture. That's what they considered Horus to look like, okay? Falcon head, human body. You can see he's got a, something on his head. He's got a staff, the whole deal, right? He's got a beak. Okay, now, okay. When the first black death hit the earth, the bubonic plague, I'm going to show you a picture that they depicted the doctors as. Look at that. Staff, beak, something on the head and a rope. This is a little too close for comfort for my taste and similar because it was that spirit behind it. You've got the beak, you've got the staff, you've got the hat, you've got the, it's similar because it was that spirit that was in the earth and then came back around in 2013. Okay. So Isis comes 666 years after the first black death hits. Okay. Isis is, is said in mythology to give birth to Horus. Horus was the falcon beak and the body and the staff and, and the picture I just showed you from the first black death. Okay. Which is no coincidence. It's the same spirit that is moving through until now. And it is the commission of the church to not only go ye all into the world and preach the gospel to every creature, but to recognize and be sober minded and vigilant. First Peter 5, 8, be sober, be alert and cautious at all times that the enemy of yours, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. When the church turns, slinks back, and promotes the idea that we do not need to be involved nor aware of events that are happening, that we don't need to be involved in the political, meaning we don't need to be aware of what's happening. We don't need to, to be knowledgeable of, of, of the attacks that are coming, of how the enemy is moving, uh, or what is unfolding in our nation. The church has made the same mistake of Germany, the same mistake of 2008, it has made the same mistake. And we have a chance now to not make it again and to be the true conscience of the state and do what we were called to do. Yes, we are here to preach the gospel. Yes, we are here to biblically teach, but we are also here to train up people and equip them to recognize when something is happening in their church, in their town, in their city, in their nation, that the enemy is attempting so the church can intercede, do their job, pray, stand up, decree and declare, come into agreement, and thwart the attack. This is the job of the church. We're supposed to be the triumphant church, not the defeated church. And guess what? In Germany, they were the defeated church. In 2008, they were the defeated church. We are not meant to be the defeated church. We are meant to be the triumphant church. And I'm showing you all of these things so you can be aware of what's going on, so you can seek the Lord and you can pray. And you can seek the Lord and you can gain wisdom and understanding and see how these things have all connected and moved about. And now there is another soul moment 
You have a father and a son. There is another Saul moment in this nation that is happening. 22 years after 9-11, Saul reigned about 22 years, according to, to most Bible scholars. You've got another Saul moment. The question is, what is the church going to do about it? Because saying we should not be involved at all and we should just look the other way and continue to preach nicey nice messages where people are completely blinded to what's happening and so ill-equipped to deal with the with the devices of the enemy so poorly equipped paul himself says we cannot be ignorant of the enemy's devices and to say we should just not be involved look the other way and 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 just just superficially teach the word is doing a great disservice to the sheep it is ill equipping them it is lying to them and it is getting them ready for failure we are meant to be the triumphant church we are meant to operate in the gifts we are meant to operate in the fivefold ministry we are meant to be involved in national matters city matters state matters we are meant to be involved and when the church slings back and starts supporting a woke agenda and taking a bite of the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil because they think their eyes will be opened and they will become more like God. We have a serious problem in this nation. Now, yes, we have to balance it and we have to teach the word and we have to always bring people back to the word and we have to teach people and we have to show them who Jesus is and how incredible he was and you need a relationship with him and you need a relationship with the father. But we also have to equip people because there is a spiritual war going on around us and we have to be able to equip people Thank you, Grace. Thank you, Grace. We have to be able to equip people to handle the attacks of the enemy. No soldier in any branch of the military is ever sent out into any area of engagement before they put them through their paces, equip them, get them ready, educate them, teach them, put them in, in, in simulated situations. They don't just throw them out there. The church is taking sheep and just throwing them out to the wolves right now. And that has to stop. We cannot be ignorant. We have to understand these things so we can know how to petition the throne of God and intercede for these matters. If the church is the conscience, the conscience is meant to go, whoa, 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 whoa. This is not. A good idea and this will bring destruction for the nation if you do it you see we are meant to be the conscience we are meant to be the standard bearers and carry the standard and what i hear a lot is oh let's put down the standard and let's just go back to teaching superficial nicey nice and just ignore everything going on in the nation you can't do that and you know people will sometimes make the argument that Jesus never said anything political or he never got involved. Jesus made one of the most politically charged statements ever of his time when the Pharisees tried to entrap him by asking him about paying taxes. And he asked them for a coin. And he asked whose name, uh, whose face is on that coin. And they said, Caesar. And he said, give to Caesar what is Caesar's and give to God. What is God's right there? Jesus said, Caesar is not God. You see in the Roman empire, it was touted that Caesar was God. And right there, he made a very public politically charged statement by saying, Caesar's not God. And he said it. So Jesus Christ himself, even when it came to certain matters, spoke up he spoke up yes he was he was he came to earth on a different mission to die for the sins of humanity and that was his main focus and he healed the sick and he raised the dead and he cast out devils and he taught the people but he also exposed the politicking of the pharisees he exposed the politicking of the romans he exposed it so there has to be a balance here 
And we have to recognize these things that have happened and gone on in order for us moving forward as the church to know what to do. Because half the church right now wants us to go back to watered down cold porridge and sour milk. And half the church is doing that right now. Cold porridge, sour milk, old wineskins. That's what it's gone back to. And the Lord is calling us deeper right now. He is calling us deeper in our walk with him. He is calling us deeper with the nation. He's calling us deeper. He wants us to come up higher. We have to answer that call right now. They didn't in Germany. They didn't in 2008. We need to answer that call. We need to be equipped. We need to put on the whole armor of God. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and the powers and the rulers of the darkness of this world and spiritual hosts of wickedness in high places. Therefore, put on the whole armor of God so you may stand. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We wrestle against the kingdom of darkness. Wrestle is a very physical term. And what's happening is a lot of the church, or part of it at least, is saying, I don't want to wrestle flesh and blood. I just want to appease them. And we're going to water down all our sermons. And we're not going to talk about anything that 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 gives the people the believer's authority, that equips them to operate in the believer's authority, that equips them to operate in the power and authority given through Christ Jesus. We're not going to do that. We're going to take that away from them and leave them defenseless. So there's got to be a balance here and we have to be aware in order to properly teach the word, go deeper in the word, be equipped with the word and be equipped to do what we're supposed to do in the nation. So this is why we do these teachings to try to help equip you so then you can understand. So then you can take it to the Lord and go deeper with him. So I hope that and pray that these teachings uh, really minister to you and you learn something out of them. Uh, and so I really, uh, you know, that is my hope. And that is my prayer that you learn something from them, that they strengthen you spiritually, that they help equip you and they help make you sober minded and vigilant because the enemy roams about like a lion seeking whom he may devour. So all glory be to God. Praise the Lord. We're coming to the end of, uh, of our broadcast here. I wanted to share something with all of you. I got together with Dr. Sherwood. Because I was noticing issues, not only in me, but in other women, like with issues with, you know, fatigue, you know, hormonal, thyroid, all the things that adrenal, all the things that women tend to fight. And I went to Dr. Sherwood with this issue and I said, Dr. Sherwood, can we create a product that not only helps women, we're going to create one for men too, I promise, but we're going to, we, can we create a product that helps women in these areas, but it glorifies God at the same time, the name of it. So we are happy to announce that we can finally make it available and we got together, Barbara prayed about it too, and it's called Rafa. So if we, there it is, that it's called Rafa, which means healer in Hebrew, because the Lord has put so much on this earth that is meant to heal us. So you can actually go to arcofgrace.org and under partners, when you, when you put, put your mouse on it, you will see the drop down and you will see Rafa there and you can order it. So there we go. You'll see Rafa and you can actually go and check it out. But we got together, myself and Dr. Sherwood, praise the Lord, because I saw an issue, he saw an issue, and we got together in order to help those out there that are going through these issues. Women that are going through these issues right now, uh, we really wanted to help because I noticed myself going through some of these issues. So if you want to go check it out, Rafa Healer is now completely praise God out. So you can go to the partner section and you can read all about it. Praise the Lord. Okay. So I think we're done for today. Oh my goodness. Grace is still up there. There she is. Grace has been around the entire time. So all of you got to see Grace. I'm so happy about that. Chet's up on his cage over there and praise the Lord. So God bless everyone. Thank you for watching. We pray you got something out of this. Take it to the Lord. Test the spirit. Uh, seek the Lord with it. We, we, we are, you know, it is a blessing to me 
when I hear when we go to events or when you write in by email that Ark of Grace Ministries has been utilized to draw you closer to the Lord and in a deeper relationship with the Lord, because that's what it's about. We are merely vessels. We are dirt that has the spirit of the Lord breathed into us. And that's all we are. And we are meant to be vessels that are filled. And we are meant to be mouthpieces that point people at the Lord, that give God all the glory, that turn him to God so they can have a deeper relationship and grow in the Lord. When you grow in the Lord, you see other things grow in your life. So please remember that. All right, armor up according to Ephesians chapter six, Psalm 91, every single day. It is a decree. It is like a contract. Declare it. It is a powerful Psalm. Uh, also the Lord's prayer. The order to that prayer is very important. We're probably going to do a teaching on this coming up and keep the faith. We love you. We're looking forward to seeing those who are coming to Wyndham and we're looking forward to seeing you in Reawaken America, Miami. And we will announce when we'll be back on. Have a wonderful rest of your day.